Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 33 of the platform specific series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials and today we're looking at the X68000. We're back on it again, I can't get enough. We're going to be looking at the alternate screen modes. We looked last time at multiple layers and things, but we didn't discuss the fact that the X68000 can do some quite high resolution and quite high color depth screen modes, including this um, 3264K one here. Just depending on how you count it, it's got transparency, so there's 32 different 32k different colors, but it's 16 bit anyway. We're going to be looking at this 256 color mode and the higher resolution modes. So I'll just close this down now so it doesn't um, animate too long and increase my video compression size. First of all, though, I'd like to tell you about the book I've written. I've written a book which is available now from Amazon. It's called Learn Multi Platform Assembly with Chibi Acmas. It covers the Z80. 8086, 68000, 6502 and ARM. A wide variety there and it's designed as absolute beginners. It discusses terminology you come across in assembly, you know, conditional compilation, labels, things like that that you may not know if you've never programmed before. It also discusses things that are more you know, specific to retro programming, what a VDP is, what the um, raster is, how to do things like disk images, how why you're going to need them, various other terminology you're going to need to know if you're planning to do retro programming and you've not done it before. After the introduction chapter though, we go into each of the individual processes and there's a chapter on each. It starts by discussing the registers and the addressing modes that that process has and then it goes into the full instruction set that you're going to come across on the basic processor. That's really what it's aimed at, it's to get you started. The book's 270 pages. It's designed to be a um, simple little book that you can get the essentials on, not some massive bulking tech book that's going to cover everything to the nth degree. Um, the book in printed form is about $20. It depends on the territory. If you go to Amazon, you should be able to find it. It's about £15 to $20, depending on which area you're in. And you can also get it an, as a Kindle book, you know, one of those digital, digital book things. If you want that, that's um, about $10. So please take a look if that sounds interesting to you. Anyway, let's go back to the 68,000 and let's discuss what we're going to be looking at today. So the X68000 has a wide variety of graphics modes and resolutions. One thing I do have to point out though, we're only going to be trying it on an emulator. I have an X68000, but I don't have the monitor. So I can't confirm these are okay to use on real hardware. And so if you're using it on a real on real hardware, you know, buyer beware, please um, take caution. And I can't be sure that it, some of the settings might not cause problems on real hardware. The way the screen resolutions work is as we increase the color depth, we in, end up reducing reducing the number of potential layers we have. So in 16 color mode, we can have four layers. In 256 color mode, we can only have two layers. And in the um, 64K mode, we can only have one layer, that's 16 bits, as I say, 32K colors or 16 bits, 64K with transparency. Now, the this also comes into when we enlarge the screen size. If we use the higher resolution screens, which includes this weird screen size here, I think this is an overscan, so an interlaced screen resolution. Basically, um, the standard window size, that, that is the um, scrolling area that we can see into, is 512 by 512, even if our screen's only 256 by 256. But on the very high resolution screen, which is 768 by 512, that's not going to be big enough to cover the entire screen. So what we do is we basically bind the those four 512 pixel areas together to make one 1024 by 1024 area. But and again, that leaves us with just a single layer. Now, the example we're going to be using today has code to switch to all of these different modes. But basically, what you need to do is you need to set the um, registers you can see here to the correct settings for the screen mode you want to use. We're not going to be using all of them actually. We're going to use 256 by 256 all the way up to 512 by 512 and then we're going to use the top one over here but we're not going to do some of the in-between ones. So if you want to play around with those you can download the example and there's a few settings you can turn on and off to try those out as well. So anyway Let's get over to the code and let's see it in action. Let's have some fun with these extra modes. So first of all, um, we've got these options up here to enable the alternate color depth. So I'm just going to disable that here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try these settings here. And by turning on different ones, we will enable different screen modes. So the default one we're going to try out here is the 256 by 256 mode. I'll just speed this up here. So here we go. This is 256 by 256 in 16 color mode. Now you can see it's based on the previous example we had. So we've got our four tile layers moving and that there is being filled with consecutive bytes of all possible colors. So you can see 
there's only 16 colors there very boring so that's our first option there 256 by 256 now the function we've used to do that is um, down here where is it here it is so this is the code that has set that up and basically all we've got is all of the settings that you can see in this table here represented in code being transferred to the appropriate hardware registers to set that screen mode and we've got alternate versions for the other screen modes and what i'm hoping is if you want to play around yourself you can take my code use it and um, you know use it as a template to start your own game and as i always say you're welcome to use my code in any way you can you can use it in your own games and you can use it for making your own tutorials you're welcome to do so you know um, make some new stuff out of it and hopefully other people can learn from your stuff as well this is the next one we're looking at. This is 512 by 256. You can see that the Chibico character has become a little bit squashed there. It's a rather strange resolution there, but um, you know, very handy, I'm sure. So that's the next one we've got there. So that's just using, again, the same basic settings, but just slightly different um, parameters. The third one we're going to be looking at is um, a much nicer 512 by 512. I say nicer because I do like those square pixels. And now our Chibico character is quite small, but you can see we're still very much in the territory of 16 colors there. Now, what we can do though, is we can increase our color depth if we enable this option here, colors 256. You'll see we're now jumping to a subroutine here. And what this is going to do, if I can find it, where is it? What this does is it ors in the value one here into the register E0028 in bit 16. And then it will also ors it in in bit zero into E82400. And the reason for that is that bits 0 and 1 of that register and bits 16 and 17 of that register define the color depth. And you can see for 256 color, we have to all in these values here. And for 64K color, we all in these values here. And those are our options. Now, as I say, 64K color, maybe I should have called it 32K color because one of the 16 bits is actually a transparent option. But anyway, that's the options we have. So if I just fire this up again now, well, now we have a 256 color screen here. So you can see we've got a much nicer range of color in this area that's been filled with all the possible byte combinations there. And we've still got two layers of Chibico graphics scrolling around the screen. What we can, however, do is we can use the 64K color option as well. If I just enable this one here. Well, now we're down to just a single layer. The other thing you'll notice is our Chibico has gone the wrong color. The reason for this is that the 256 color mode uses a palette, but the 64K color mode does not. So the bytes we write to the memory addresses of the screen are no longer a lookup in a palette entry. They're now actually the color definition themselves. And the color definition you can see just here, it's um, five bits for green, five bits for red, five bits for blue, and one bit which is a transparent bit. And I think this relates to multi layers and the um, there's a sort of um, transparent mode which isn't quite what it sounds like it, it's more of a sort of masked transparency it's not something I've tried out myself but as I say that's apparently what it is so we don't actually get 64,000 colors we actually end up with a, a mere 32,000 colors I think that's a heck of a lot and far more than I tend to use on these retro systems so that's the options we have with regards to the colors and the um, standard modes. But what we have is these high resolution modes, which I think are using an interlacing function. So they're interlacing the screen and effectively doubling the height of the screen. Now, the one we're going to be looking at is the very top one. So this is, it's called 768 by 512 but I think it's actually 1024 tall, just looking at the, the visual shape of the screen. Uh, as I say, I think it's 512 pixels, but it's using the interlacing of the monitor to effectively double the vertical resolution. And again, all we need to do to use this is send the right settings to our hardware. And um, I can't find them in all my code here, they are. So these are the settings we need to send just here to turn this mode on. The other thing we need to do though, is we need to stitch the um, four tile layers to together so instead of having up to four uh, scrolling layers we now have just one giant scrolling layer and so to do this we have to enable this option here this is just my option to make sure that we're um, disabling the other things and so now we're just using a single layer and now if I run this now well now we have one enormous layer here see it's absolutely huge and it's that is not 7, 
68 by 5 to have, I think I have 768 by 1024 because it's using up all my entire full HD capture area here. So yeah, as I say, the, the, the title is a bit odd, calling it times 512, but that's the way it's referred to in all the documentation. So that's what I've used as well. That's that's a thousand pixels tall. Anyway, very, very high resolution option there. Very impressive. So there we go. So as you see, we've, we've got a lot of options of extra resolutions that we can use on the X68000. It, really an impressive bit of hardware. I mean, I, I think um, ex extremely impressive for the day, but I, I get a lot of uh, pleasure out of it even today. And um, I mean, personally, I'm happy with 256 by 256 times 16 colors, but with so many other options available, it really seemed um, appropriate to discuss them all and to discuss all of its extra capabilities. As I said before, if you um, liked what you saw, you go ahead, go to my website and download the source code and have a play with it. And um, I'm sure you can um, do far more exciting things than you've seen me do today. But I just wanted to give you some sample code that would actually work and get get these alternate modes working because um, you know it's it's easy to see all of this in the documentation sometimes the Japanese documentation I was reading but it's not really um, it's not really very friendly if you're trying to get these things started if you've enjoyed what you've seen please hit the like button that would help me out it encourages YouTube to show this video to more people and if you're not subscribed it would help me out if you hit the subscribe button as well you know it keeps my motivation up to keep making more weird tutorials on weird systems anyway I hope you've enjoyed this thanks for watching today